I was having a discussion on Twitter with someone about my favorite movies. My two top favorite movies are Brazil and Blade Runner. I'm not sure which one I really like more. They both present a different life than we're living now. With Brazil, it was more about being in a very strange, zany kind of alternative reality, with a lot of problems being caused by government regulations and red tape, with a lot of very archaic technology mixed in with kind of current technology. It was really strange. What makes Brazil so cool is, I mean, to me, this is what makes it cool, is the fact that you have to understand the reality that they're living in in order to finally understand the actual plot of the movie. The plot is pretty easy. I'm not going to give that away, but the plot is pretty easy. You just have to watch it a couple times to figure out what that is through the crazy reality they're living in, and I just really enjoy that. You know, I love movies that kind of confuse me, and I have to watch them again. I love the movies that I notice something new every time I watch it. Now, perhaps I've seen Brazil so many times it'd be hard to find something new, but I'm sure it could still happen. With Blade Runner, some of the things that make it so amazing are some of the visual effects, the environments that are created, mostly put together by Douglas Trumbull, the same guy who did Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 2001. He directed Brainstorm. I mean, these other ones, he's just the effects guy, but on Brainstorm, he actually directed that one. He was trying to set up 60 frames per second in the theater. Brainstorm was filmed in two aspect ratios. One was kind of the your, your standard 4 by 3 and then the other was a much wider aspect ratio. And when you were in the normal scenes, it was, it was just the standard. And then when you went to the brain scenes, so to speak, I, I don't want to ruin the movie, I'll just say the brain scenes, it was supposed to go wide and switch to 60 frames per second. They were never really able to implement that because just theaters weren't able to afford getting that equipment, so they had to settle it at 24 frames a second. Personally, I really wish they'd release a, a new version on video that actually shows those scenes in the, in the appropriate 60 frames a second. I doubt they'll ever do it, though. Anyway, with Blade Runner, it had some of the most ethereal imagery ever put on the big screen. The environment gave me so many feelings at once. It was spacious and liminal, yet sometimes claustrophobic and crowded. And then sometimes it was all of those things at the same time. It was weird. But it felt like a genuine place. It wasn't clean and pristine. It was dirty, wet, raw, kind of depressing, but always futuristic looking. It was dystopian, yet haunting and beautiful at the same time. And what gave that feeling, just as much as the visuals did, was the soundtrack. This was easily Vangelis' best work, and probably my favorite movie soundtrack of all time. I've probably listened to it well over 200 times. I was very saddened by Vangelis' death, last year. But the notion of having a memorable soundtrack seems to have gone by the wayside in recent years. John Williams seems to be the last of the greats. I've listened to many of his soundtracks just, just by themselves hundreds and hundreds of times, just like, uh, uh, you know, Vangelis's Blade Runner soundtrack. I mean, they've all died. Jerry Goldsmith died in 2004. James Horner died in 2015. Danny Elfman is still around, but I don't know whether I consider him in on those levels. But he's good. He's good. So, I mean, I'll give him that. John Barry died in 2011. I loved his stuff. His stuff was so moody. I especially loved his James Bond soundtracks. Uh, I think his best work was on Moonraker, personally. But uh, he didn't do much past the 1990s, so... Think about what Harry Potter would have been like if it wouldn't have initially had John Williams doing the soundtrack. On an audio level, he is what gave those movies, the first three movies, their magical feel. The later Harry Potter movies were done by other people, and they had a, a much darker feel, but that was the main focus, was kind of the darkness. Which is fine, it's a totally different type of soundtrack, but it's not something I would want to sit down and listen to, is it? Imagine Indiana Jones without the theme. Star Wars, Jurassic Park, so many of them. So many movies that became cinematic masterpieces 
in part because of those soundtracks. Yeah, and there are some movies that if you if you were to look back at them now and they didn't have those soundtracks, like imagine uh, Superman one and two. You know, I, I think the main the, the best things about those movies were the soundtracks. I mean, you look at those now; it's so cheesy. You know, I enjoyed them at the time, but then again, I was a kid, so so. I mean, I can still watch them now, and I think the soundtrack is probably one of the main things that allows me to still enjoy them. But can you think of a DC or Marvel movie in the last 20 years that had a soundtrack that you wanted to have a copy of your own, that you could just enjoy listening to by itself? I mean, besides when they use songs that are already popular. I'm talking about the orchestral type of music you find in movies. When's the last time you bought a movie soundtrack? Again, it's a little different when we're talking about movies that use songs that were popular or are popular. Think of, like, Pulp Fiction. Al Green with Let's Stay Together. Link Ray with Rumble. Cool and the Gang with Jungle Boogie. Urge Overkill with Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon. You know, that was a great soundtrack. Those were great tunes that really fit the scenes. And every time you hear those songs, you think of that movie, right? So, I mean, that's cool. You know, there are lots of movies that have done this, and and that's great. But what about an orchestral type of soundtrack? Much of what we get in movies now are just kind of environmental type of soundtracks. Lots of ethereal sounding noises, but no actual music. And when there is actual music, it's so generic that there's you can't remember anything about it. You know, it sounds like typical movie trailer music for an action movie or something. I mean, it's certainly nothing you would want to sit down and listen to by itself. At least I know I sure wouldn't. I'm actually really annoyed when I hear some of these generic soundtracks. Dun, 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 or whatever, you know, they just got these, these, there's this, there's also the pew, that, 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 uh, uh, this bass thing, and then they'll, I don't know, it's just, it's just so typical. It's just, you hear them in so many of the trailers, it's just so pathetic. I hear it and I just cringe. Come on, couldn't you be a little more original than that? It seriously cheapens the movie. I would rather there be no soundtrack at all than have that kind of generic soundtrack. A bad or generic soundtrack can completely ruin a movie for me. In that discussion about uh, Blade Runner and movies and such, they were trying to get me to see Blade Runner 2049. I haven't seen it yet. They were trying to say that it was way better. I've, I've heard... Totally mixed reviews about this, but this person was saying it was way better than the original. To, to them. I doubt that, but, you know, maybe the movie itself will be great. I don't know. They didn't like the pacing of the original Blade Runner, apparently. I liked the pacing. I thought the pacing was great. I liked that the original movie had some some very gory scenes. I, they, they weren't ridiculously gory. I mean, the eye-popping scene was was pretty gory, depending on which version you watch. But I think some goriness can be appropriate. I'm all right with that sometimes. I mean, like, what what is this director's name? The the guy who did Starship Troopers, right? I didn't like Starship Troopers. I thought that was just kind of the the gore and just it was just ridiculous. Maybe I'd feel differently about it now. It's been a while since I watched it. But like, who doesn't like the original Total Recall, right? You know that type of gore. It, it was it was great. You know. <laughs> But I tried listening to bits of the soundtrack to Blade Runner 2049, and it just, all I heard were just droning notes with some ethereal sounds mixed in. And it's just like, well, come on. I mean, it's nothing I'd want to sit down and listen to unless it was just droning in the background while I'm working on something else. Vangelis' soundtrack was a masterpiece. So, you know, it's really hard to say which movie I liked more, Blade Runner or Brazil. I guess it depends on what I'm judging about the movies. How do you feel about soundtracks? How important are they to you? You know, and what type of soundtrack do you prefer in a movie? Do you prefer the ones where it's just sounds to make what's on the screen more enticing? Or do you like something that, you know, does some of that, but also gives you something to remember? You know, do you like the memorable soundtracks more? Or does it not matter? I mean, some people, it doesn't really matter. It's just like, eh, it's just, it's just a soundtrack, you know? So some, it's, you know, I'm a musician, so I look at this stuff a bit differently. How about you?